Hey guys, welcome to the second part of solving Cambridge IGCSE Chemistry Paper 4 taken in February 2020. We'll continue from where we left at the previous video. Question 3. The periodic table is a method of classifying elements. Identify the element which is in group 6 and period 4. So we just have to take a look at the periodic table which will be given in the last page of our exam paper. This will be period 4. And this will be group 6. So the one over here is selenium. So the answer is going to be selenium. Next, B. Calcium is in group 2 and chlorine is in group 7 of the periodic table. Explain in terms of number of outer shell electrons and electron transfer how calcium atoms and chlorine atoms form ions. Give the formulae of the ions formed. So since calcium is in group 2, we can say that calcium has two outer electrons. And we know that from group 1 to group 4, the atoms in those groups will lose electrons. So the calcium ion is going to be Ca2+. Plus. Next, for the chlorine, it's in group 7. So the atoms in the groups 5 to 7 will gain electrons. And we know that it's group 7, so it has 7 outer electrons. And each chlorine atom will gain 1 electron because it already has 7. And to make the perfect outer electrons, it just needs one more. So that's why Cl is Cl-. Group 5 chlorides are covalent molecules. The boiling points of some group 5 chlorides are shown. Suggest the approximate boiling point of PCl3. It's this one. While these atoms can be found in group 5, just over here, and you will notice that it's going down the group. So as it goes down the group, you can see that the temperature is increasing. So the approximate boiling point can be any temperature between 71 degrees Celsius and 130 degrees Celsius. So I'll just put 100 degrees Celsius. Next, the question says, explain the trend in boiling points in terms of attractive forces between particles. So boiling points and the relation of attractive forces. So what we can say is, as the attractive forces between the molecules increase, you require more heat to break the forces, and that's why you need a higher boiling point. As the attraction forces increase between molecules, the boiling point increases. Complete the dot and cross diagram to show the electron arrangement in the molecule of PCl3. Show outer electrons only. So the number of outer electrons for phosphorus P is 5. And the number of outer electrons for Cl is 7. And both of them need to have 8 outer electrons in total in order to form a proper compound of PCl3. So Cl will need one more electron added to its structure. So let's first draw the electrons in Cl. We have 6 and 7th one over here. And it needs one more, so it's going to take one electron from phosphorus. There. So the same goes for the other two chlorine atoms. Alright, and phosphorus is supposed to have five electrons of its own. And there are currently three dots. So we're just going to add two more dots for five electrons of phosphorus. And there, you'll see that there are a total of eight electrons. Part D. PCl3 reacts with chlorine Cl2 to form PCl5. This reaction is exothermic and it reaches an equilibrium. Describe two features of an equilibrium. We can first mention the most common definition of an equilibrium, which is the rate of forward reaction equals to the rate of reverse reaction. And the second feature of an equilibrium is that both of the reactants and the products that will have constant concentrations. Alright, state the effect, if any, on the position of this equilibrium when the following changes are made. Explain your answers. 
temperature is increased. So the first part of the question said that the reaction is exothermic, which means that the forward reaction is going to produce heat. In other words, increase the temperature. So when the temperature is increased, in order to maintain this equilibrium, this reaction will try to decrease the temperature. And since the forward reaction increases the temperature, like over here, this equilibrium, we say, will shift to the left-hand side in this way. As the forward increases the temperature, the backward will naturally decrease the temperature. So when the temperature is increased, the position of the equilibrium will shift to the left-hand side as the forward reaction is exothermic. Well, what about when the pressure is increased? Well, we'll have to look at the number of moles in front of this reactant and the product. So there's actually one, one, and one in front. And you can see that there are total two moles and one mole and the product side. So the pressure of this left-hand side is higher than the pressure on the right-hand side because there are more number of moles on the left-hand side. In other words, this equilibrium will shift to the right-hand side as there are fewer moles of gas on the right-hand side. Explain in terms of particles what happens to the rate of the forward reaction when the reaction mixture is heated. So now they're not talking about the equilibrium or the left-hand side or the right-hand side. They're just asking about the rate of the reaction related to the mixture being heated or when the temperature is increased. So when the temperature is increased, the particles will have more energy and the rate will eventually increase. PCl5 reacts with lithium fluoride LiF to form LiPF6. This is the reaction that's given. Calculate the mass of LiF needed to form 3.04 grams of LiPF6 using the following steps. First, we have to calculate the number of moles of LiPF6 formed. So the formula of number of moles is number of moles equals to the mass over the MR or the relative molecular mass. The mass of LiPF6 is given, it's 3.04. So 3.04 divided by the MR, MR is also given, it's 152. And we'll get 0 0.02 for the answer. Next, deduce the number of moles of LIF needed. We can see that there's one mole of LIPF6 for every six moles of LIF. So, since the number of moles of LIPF6 is 0 0.02, for LIF, we'll just have to multiply by 6. And this will give 0 0.12. Calculate the mass of LIF needed. So we're going to use the same equation, number of moles equals to the mass over MR. But this time we're finding the mass. So it can be rewritten as mass equals to the number of moles times MR. So the number of moles of LIF is what we've just calculated, 0 0.12 times the MR. So if you look at the periodic table, Li, lithium, is over here, and its molecular mass is 7, and fluoride is over here, its molecular mass is 19. So to find the molecular mass of LiF, we just have to do 7 plus 19. And if we use our calculator to calculate this, you'll get 3.12. Part F. Lithium fluoride has ionic bonding. What is an ionic bonding? 
So ionic bonding is when oppositely charged ions are attracted to each other and the bond is formed. Give two physical properties of ionic compounds. So we can mention anything about the electrical conductivity or the solubility or something like boiling point and melting point when we're talking about the physical properties. And for an ionic compound, they will be soluble in water. Also, they will conduct electricity when they're in aqual state or when they're molten. Also, they will have a high boiling point or melting point. So you can just write any two of these. Question 4. Iron is a typical transition element. Iron acts as a catalyst, forms color compounds, has more than one oxidation state. So these are actually the features of a transition element. And part A says, name one major industrial process that uses iron as a catalyst and name the product made in this process. So the famous process where they use iron as a catalyst is a Haber process. And this process is used to make a product called ammonia. Part B. When aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to aqueous iron to sulfate, a precipitate forms. What color is this precipitate? So sodium hydroxide is made of Na plus OH minus. And aqueous iron to sulfate is made of Fe2 plus and SO42 minus. So when there is a precipitate form, it's going to be made of Fe2 plus and OH minus which will be FeOH2 and the color of this is green you have to just remember the color of these kind of popular precipitates now write the ionic equation for this reaction include state symbols so I've just said that Fe2 plus and OH minus will form the product so we can just write that down we have to include the state symbols. So Fe2 plus is in an aqueous solution, so Aq. Also, sodium hydroxide was in aqueous solution, so Aq again. And it's a precipitate, so the product is a solid. Part C. Iron 2 sulfate can be converted to iron 3 sulfate by potassium manganate 7 at room temperature. What is the role of potassium manganate 7 in this reaction? Now, potassium manganate 7 is often used as an oxidizing agent. So that's why iron 2 sulfate became iron 3 sulfate. It has been oxidized. Then, what condition must be used for this reaction to occur? Well, to use an oxidizing agent called potassium manganate 7, it needs to be an acidic condition or we can write the presence of an acid. In terms of electron transfer, what happens to the ion to ions in this reaction? So you can see that ion 2, Fe2 plus became Fe3 plus. While the number of protons do not change, but just the number of electrons that are changing. So it has actually lost an electron to become 3 plus from 2 plus. State the color change seen during this reaction from purple. Well, when it's Fe2 plus and sulfate, it's purple, but if it's Fe3 plus and sulfate, it has no color, it's colorless. Part D Did use the charge on the iron ion in each of these compounds. So the thing with transition elements is that they can have multiple charges. So we cannot be sure whether it's Fe2 plus or 3 plus or 4 plus. So when we have Fe and F3, one thing we know is that the charge of fluorine is minus 1. So if fluorine needs to have 3 of itself to be a compound with iron, it means that the negative 1 charge is times 3. So it becomes minus 3. So the charge of ion should be plus 3 to even out this negative charge. So the answer is plus 3. 
and for Fe NO3 3, again the charge of nitrate ion is negative 1. And you see that there are 3 of these. So it's again it's minus 1 times 3, giving you minus 3. So it has negative 3 charge. So iron also needs to be of positive 3 to even out this negative charge. So the answer is positive 3. Number 5. There are two types of polymers. Addition polymers are made from many identical small units. What is the term used to describe these small units? It's called a monomer. Next, a section of an addition polymer is shown. Okay, and it says draw the structure of the small unit used to make this addition polymer. Show all of the atoms and all of the bonds. So to draw the monomer, we need to see the pattern of this polymer, and we can see one pattern. This is repeated three times in this polymer. So this is one of the main pattern of the monomer that we're going to draw. And since it's an addition polymer, it needs to have a C double C bond, which is this. So if we draw it, it's going to look like C double C bond, H, H, CH3, CH3. And we're done. It's simple. We just have to identify the pattern and make sure you put in the C double C bond because it's an addition polymer. Part B. Polyamides are condensation polymers. What does the term condensation mean when used to describe this type of polymer? So we can have different condensation polymers and this condensation is used only when the product is water. So if you don't get water as a product, you can't call that polymer as a condensation polymer. Part C. A polyamide can be made from two different molecules. A simplified structure of octane dioic acid is shown. The one with the black box. A simplified structure of 1,6-diaminohexane is shown, the one with the white box. Complete the diagram to show a section of polyamide manufactured from octane dioic acid and 1,6-diaminohexane. Include all the atoms and all the bonds in the linkages. So from the octane dioic acid, we have COOH, and from the 1,6-diaminohexane, we have NH2. If we combine these two, we're going to form something called the amine bond and it's gonna look like CO and NH so we just have to substitute this onto this diagram below so let me just draw it okay and here's what it looks like when it's all drawn we have the amine bonds three of them over here one two three and we need to show this continuation bonds to show that it can be linked infinitely. Now the last part, state the name of a synthetic polyamide. So the name of a synthetic polyamide is nylon. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope this helped you guys. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and like my video. Feel free to comment your doubts or feedbacks if you have any. Stay safe and God bless you guys. Bye!